That's when I want to learn. I just got to know from that topic, Maria. You know, we have a Latin mass down at the other church. Yeah. All right, well, I'd like to talk more to you and you, Dave, and uh, Kayla, and um, maybe one day, uh, maybe next week we can make an appointment. Yep. Um, and just get together. Yeah. Uh, I have my schedule on me now, actually. <laughs> I don't, know <laughs> I don't know how to do things on the phone. I got, like I have some priest friends, especially the younger ones, uh, guys. They, they, you know, my, oh, yeah, my schedule is not Thursday, or, you know. No, mine's written down on an actual calendar. Oh, really? I have a paper calendar for five years. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Well, I do it that way too, but it's yeah. down there. <laughs> the <other church. laughs> Yeah, no, I need it on paper. I can't be scrolling <laughs> through my phone. <laughs> awesome. All right, I don't want to take up too much of your time, okay? And um, see you next time, okay? God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, Bye. Good night. Well, I guess we're trying to pray now, but let's start with prayer. <laughs> <laughs> in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Holy and blessed Trinity. <laughs> we know you're with us. Please help us to learn about you. For the more that we learn about you, the deeper we fall in love with you. And Holy Mother, please keep your mantle over us and lead us to your Son. And we pray the words that Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. Thy, thy will be done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread. bread. And we give those who pass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We begin all things with the sign of the cross. Whatever else we say after that, we begin all things with the sign of the cross. And the sign of the cross is a prayer in itself. Right. You know. Um, Okay. So, uh, okay. So, for Alex, basically, what we kind of want to do this year is um, learn about God. Who is He? Where is He? What is He? Um, you, us, mankind, sin—the great, great problem of sin. The great need for a Savior and the great need for the Catholic Church. Um, just to rehash really quickly, as a review, God is Trinity. That means that there are three divine persons in one God. We do not believe in three gods. We believe in one God. In that one God is a unity of three divine persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God the Father has one nature, divine nature. God the Holy Spirit has one nature, divine nature. God the Son, Jesus Christ, has two natures, divine nature and human nature. That means that God the Son, Jesus Christ, is one divine person with two natures. It does not mean that he's a human person and a divine person mixed together is one person, two natures. Um, <clears throat> we learned that God is our creator. He created all of the universe, and he did it out of nothing. He didn't go down to the local Walmart and say, I need a few thousand planets and some stars and a couple boxes of dirt. He created out of nothing. And we learned last week for fun that the universe has a beginning, and um, in being that it has a beginning, it had to have been started by something outside of it. And we call that something or someone God. Um, God, in all of his creation, has created only one thing in his own image. You guys remember what that is? Mankind, right. Us. 
We're, we are in, created in God's image. We are made up of body and soul. We are not a spirit trapped in a body. Our body and soul are together and will be together for all eternity. After we pass through the death of our body and our soul separates from our body, at the resurrection when Jesus Christ comes again, our soul will be reunited to our bodies, our risen bodies. So forever and all eternity, we will be body and soul. Uh, we just want to make sure that we end up in the right place. <laughs> because <laughs> to be body and soul in hell, I don't think it will be very much fun at all. Um, so we want to end up in heaven. That's our goal in life. <clears throat> Um, so today, oh yeah, oh, another thing to review is that God created us male and female in his image. And he has given to us a share in his life. And he's given to us a share in his creative action. So that when a man and a woman come together... And in the sacrament of holy matrimony and in the marital act within that sacrament, a new person is created. Um, the sperm from the man and the egg from the female come together. And at that moment, God makes a soul for that person. So that is a new person. And he has allowed man and woman a share in that creative action of his and that new person is also created in the image of God. That new person is loved and wanted by God. Um, even if we have misused this sharing in the creative power, um, that person that is created is still loved and wanted by God. And God has a purpose for that person, uh, just like he has a purpose for all of us. Um, God also, being creator, did not make everything and then just sit alongside on the sidelines and just watch everything go on. He is um, involved in us. He's involved in our lives. He uh, sustains us moment to moment to moment. God is sustaining all of his creation. But as he would withdraw that sustaining um, action of his, we would not be here anymore. Nothing would be here anymore. So he's sustaining us moment to moment to moment. Um, can I add anything else, Kayla or Davey, that you can think of to review so far? Um, I mean, if you, if you want to write my notes from last week, you can. There's also, the class last week actually was also recorded. Once I get your number in my tel my telephone, I'll text you my YouTube channel because what I'm doing actually is putting it on my YouTube channel. But there's two Don Arnolds on the YouTube channel that have YouTube channels, so you have to make sure you get the right one because I don't know the other person. Did last week's turn out better than the week before? It did because oh. because my mic worked. Okay, because so the first it, week was really bad. I know it was terrible. I had to um I guess when Windows updated. The, there's something happened with the microphone. So I had to go on to real tech and, and just get an updated microphone program. I can't believe I said that because I really don't know what I did. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this week I want to concentrate on our everlasting soul. As I said, we were we are both body and soul. And our soul is very important. Our soul is supposed to control our body, not the other way around. And being that we have sin in the world, it's very difficult for our, us to listen to our soul. So um, let's just get down to the basic and see where in creation we actually got this soul. I want to um, read in Genesis. Chapter 2, we'll go verse 4 to 9, and then 15 to 24. Now, this is the second story of creation. 
Last week we read the creation story where God created this on day one and that on day two and so forth. This is the second story of creation. And remember that the church is not so much concerned about the physical creation as much as she is that God created and he created us and he created everything good. His creation I'm doing chapter two, four through nine. Is that what I'm doing? Um, Chapter 2, 4 through 9, and then we're going to skip 10 to 14 and go to 15 to 24. It's going to say the second, um, it's going to say second story of creation, starting with our city. Well, mine says the Garden of Eden. I have a... Oh, chapter 2, verse 4. Chapter 2, verse, yeah, starting with verse Yeah, four. mine is the Garden, Garden of Eden. Well, actually, it's the Where second part of verse 4. Okay. When the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Of different books. Well, At the time different when the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Yep. Do yours have the NTM top or no? Just say Genesis 2. Mine just says Genesis 2. You have it down? Okay, then we all have the same book. No way. No way. I don't know. But Does Davy have G? No. Oh, the new American. No, just look up on the top of the on the top. Genesis. Does it no, say no. Genesis two? Yes, it does. Just Genesis two. Well, I have the well, garden, garden of Eden after. I know, I have that one. But you don't have O T. Well, we do in the corner, yeah. Like. No, no, but by Genesis two, then we will have the same. No, he does that. Don is just as old. Her book is old. It's just yeah. look at her book. But you know. All right, maybe I should just, but I have all my notes. Yes. Yeah. Well, we can just adjust. It's basically the same. I'll read it slowly. And when yours doesn't say exactly the words that I'm reading from mine, um, I'll just read it slowly so it can maybe sink in a little bit easier. Okay, so this is Genesis chapter 2, starting with the later part of verse 4. Yours says the Garden of Eden, mine says second story of creation. At the time when the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, while as yet there was still no field, shrub on earth, and no grass of the field had been sprouted, for the Lord God had sent no rain upon the earth, and there was no man to till the soil. But a stream was welling up out of the earth and was watering all the surface of the ground. The Lord God formed man out of the clay of the ground and blew into his nostrils the breath of life. And so man became a living being. Then the Lord God planted a garden in Eden, in the east, and he placed there the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground the Lord God made various trees grow that were delightful to look at and good for food, with the tree of life in the middle of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and bad. So now we're going to skip 10. We're going to go down to 15, which is really you just skipping a paragraph. Verse 15. The Lord God then took the man and settled him in the Garden of Eden to cultivate and care for it. The Lord God gave man this order. You are free to eat from any of the trees of the garden except the tree of knowledge of good and bad. From that tree you shall not eat. The moment you eat from it, you are surely doomed to die. The Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a suitable partner for him. So the Lord God formed out of the ground various wild animals and various birds of the air, and he brought them to the man to see what he would call them. Whatever the man called each of them would be its name. 
The man gave names to all the cattle, all the birds of the air, and all the wild animals, but none proved to be the suitable partner for the man. So the Lord God cast a deep sleep on the man, and while he was asleep, he took out one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. The Lord God then built up into a woman the rib that he had taken from the man. When he brought her to the man, the man said, This one, at last, is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of her man this one has been taken. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and clings to his wife, and the two of them become one body. The man and his wife, I know I'm going to 25. The man and his wife were both naked, yet they felt no shame. So this, at this point, there's no sin in the world. So there's no shame between Adam and Eve. In the part where it's talking about where God blew the breath, his breath into the nostrils of Adam, that's God's life being blown into Adam. That's his soul. So, talking about the soul, just for fun, I want to go over some medical evidence for the soul. And there's just two examples that I wanted to give for the medical evidence for the soul, and that is near-death experiences, for short NDEs, and what we call terminal lucidity. We'll do near-death experiences first. Most of these uh, experiences are had by people, usually in hospital settings. They um, and their witnesses were witnessed by medical personnel. Hmm. Now, near death experiences are experiences that people go through when they're in the process of dying. Uh, the heart stops, breathing stops, and within 30 seconds, the brain stops functioning. Most of the brain's functions will cease. There's no gag reflex. Um, the EEG is flat. Do you know what I'm talking about, EEG? Okay. So your cardiogram, your heart is beating like this, the heart goes flat. Then the brain waves detected are like this, and then they go flat. So the brain is not functioning. The front part of the brain uh, is not functioning. That's where you have your thinking ability. The back part of the brain is not functioning. That's what controls your um, body's um, systems that keep you alive, that you don't think about, like your heartbeat and your breathing. <clears throat> now, these uh, studies have shown that people, people's consciousness continues after their body goes through what we call this clinical death. And uh, it, can, it can go on for hours until they're revived. Um, the researchers that have done these studies over the years kind of had a tough time because they've got to get to the hospital and, and interview people and sometimes by the time they get there and get the records and what happened and whatnot the the person who has gone through this experience may have forgotten it so you're going to find that not everyone has this experience or they did have the experience but they can't remember it they can't recall it so um there's a few things about these uh near-death experiences. The first is that patients can accurately report events in the hospital room. There's been people who um, have this experience and they can tell you everything that the doctors were doing. They can even tell you who's in the waiting room, their relatives or, or friends. 
and what they were wearing. They can tell you conversations also. And the researchers have verified these, these different things um, with the hospital personnel and the family and friends who were there in the waiting room. There was um, one experience that I had read about where this this person had a near death experience, and they said that there was a, a either a sneaker or a shoe on one of the hospital ledges, up on a hospital ledge, and they described the the, the shoe, and um, someone from the hospital went out and looked at it, and it was exactly as they described described it. There was like I think a hole in the toe and something like that, and they described it exactly. Um. There was a patient who had been in a coma. When he awoke, he he um, he uh, he was able to tell what nurse and uh, what nurse put his dentures somewhere, and he was able to see where she put them, and they found his dentures for him. Uh, and number and two, this is people that they're saying like as their eyes are under, like their brain's not making any activity. Okay, not when they're under, like you're thinking anesthesia under. Well, no, but like so, like yeah. they're like unconscious. They're unconscious, yeah. And their brain's like not making any sort of thing on the machine, but right. they're still remembering. Them. Right. They're having these near death experiences. They're in the process of dying, and when the Catholic Church teaches, so it's them, like a short term thing. Yes. Oh, okay. yes. It's sure. It's the not process, like they've been in the like the person that was in the coma. It's not like they were in a coma for like six months. Right. Right. It was a sh right. They were able to bring this person um back back, back within so, like a few hours. Right. Oh. Within a few hours. So thank you for asking, clarifying that. <clears throat> I mainly asked because one of my friends woke up brain dead. I got that's the. Mm -hmm. Well, um, the day of my friend's funeral, her twin sister also tried to kill herself and is currently in the hospital completely brain dead. Okay, you know, let's stop and just address that right now. We are in, the, we are created in the image of God. We have souls. Our souls have the ability to commune with God, to pray to God, to praise Him to realize that God is near, no matter what our physical body state is in. So your friend still has her soul. Is it a her, did yep. you say? Her soul. Yep. And her soul is still able to uh, realize God, pray to God, uh, and God is still able to Communicate. I'm still praying for a miracle that you yes. know we hear that you know there's mm -hmm. a you know she doesn't have to get off the machine that she will survive. I mean, we just lost her twin sister. Yeah. You know? What's her first name? Her first name is Jane. I will pray for her. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she's Christine's sister. Mm -hmm. I have to write that down. Right. The story of the Garden of Eden, which you just described, like, didn't they already cover the create, like, Genesis, well, like, first chapter Genesis 27, like, God created mankind in this image, and the image of God he created them, male and female, and created them? Like, is the Garden of Eden, like, is it another, I mean, it's two, just like. Two stories. Right. And, so but it's, I like, think he's asking, like, so the first story, woman wasn't created yet. Well, yeah. no, like, earlier it's like. I think that's more of like a, like, to tell in the future. So it's like how, like, the timeline from creation to the Garden of Eden, like, how much time has passed since that? Right. We don't know. And when the church is not concerned with that, okay. she's concerned with just that God created. He created good, and he created us in his image. There's yeah. other things that the church is concerned with, too, but that's basically it. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess I guess I should just say that at, at some point, um, your faith grows stronger. And you realize, like for me, it, it doesn't really, it doesn't matter to me whether I know what God is trying to put across in these two creation stories. 
I believe him and I trust him. If I don't understand why there's two creation story, I'm not too concerned with that. I just place my faith in him and I trust him that there's a purpose for it. I might not know it, but there's a purpose. Does that help at all or? Um, it doesn't mean they, that things, excuse me, Donna, it doesn't mean that things happen twice. Right. It just means that it's like, they're being it, told each, yeah. the same thing is being told yeah. in two different sets of words. Like the Garden of Eden story is just elaborating on what was already said in Genesis. About how a woman like, was made. Yeah. Right. Like, it's just elaborating on what was already there. It's paying attention more to the case of man. Yeah. Um, hang in there. Because yeah. <laughs> it seems, it almost seems to conflict in a way. Because it's like, well, God created this, 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 and this first. And then here, the second story of creation, we have before God formed this, 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 and this, he made man. Yeah. But, um, I don't really have an answer. I just, I think sometimes things come down to faith. Like, yeah, it's just like, I see it as like, there's so many like, it's kind of like, well, yeah, it's just explaining the story in a more like in the context that we can understand. It's like, you can't understand God, but it's like, in a way, like there's degrees of separation between us and God, right? Or like, but the point is like, yes, yeah, in a different way. It's the same story told in a different way, as it and it's like as that story complex. Like I want to study this book. I really want to learn it and all of it. Like it's there's so much beauty in the hit, like everything. How this is all here for like everyone, you know? And like it's just yeah, it's just elaborating but explaining the same story in a different way, you know. In the way that we could internalize it more and actually understand it more than, you know, but it's like there's so much symbolism, I think, there's like the beauty in like having like an allegory or like a way to explain, a way to actually internalize our perceptions in a way that we can know right from wrong, or like, you know, and I just think it's beautiful, really. Like, um, yeah, no, anyway. It is. It is. It is. It is. One one thought. Um, The Holy Spirit knows everything. Absolutely everything. Because the Holy Spirit is God. Okay? So when we have a practice of invoking the Holy Spirit before we read the Bible, before we read a passage, because some Holy Spirit enlightened me and enlightened what I'm going to be reading, you know, and so forth. So but you will get to know that as time goes on. Cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like the beginning, the beginning, the beginning. Right. <laughs> okay. Um, but uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Praise God. <laughs> so um, let's see. Oh yes, back to the soul then. Um, Another medical evidence for the soul is that people who were born blind, who have these near-death experiences, can see during their experience. They are born blind, so they've never had a visual image. They can smell, taste, feel, hear, but they've never had a visual image. And they can see during these near-death experiences. And there's a woman named Vicki Noratuk, uh, specifically, who was 22 years old and had a an accident and ha- went through this a near-death experience. And I have it on my little computer here, so I was going to just play the little video for her, for you of her speaking, because I think it sounds better than me just uh, telling you what she said.